I wish this all could end. This is April. She's been through a lot in her life. Due to some unexpected issues, her mother was unable to survive her pregnancy. The last thing she saw before closing her eyes forever was her little baby in the arms of the doctors. Even my birth was cursed. My life was a disaster from the very beginning. As April grew up, her father became very enraged at life. He never drank or did drugs, but due to the immense workload, her father could not keep up with April as she grew up. And when April turned two, her father realized that she would be better off in a place where more people could care for her. Sadly, there was a lack of orphanages in the area, so April's father was forced to take her far, far away, eventually finding an orphanage in a rural area far from other towns. This orphanage housed, fed, and taught the kids. They say it was to save cost, but in reality, they wanted to have full control over the kids in their lives. My father didn't even want me. I had to go to that horrible place. As April began to grow up, she was constantly bullied for her looks. She looked exactly like her mother. She had long, curly red hair, and her face was covered in freckles. She was very skinny for most of her younger years. At the age of 12, the bullying was so bad that April contemplated suicide on multiple occasions. Should have just ended it, when those kids wouldn't stop. April never did kill herself as much as she thought about it. She never could. Instead, she found other ways to cope with her situation. At the age of 16, April found a way to sneak drugs from the outside town into the orphanage when the kids would leave to get food from the market. Due to the effects of the drugs, April became very frail, and the effects showed so much that the caretakers eventually didn't allow her to leave the orphanage. She was forced to do nothing but school, eat, and sleep. She worked out in her free time right before bed, she lived like this until she turned 18. <laughs> yeah, kind of glad the caretakers stopped me from going out. It stopped my drug habits and I got a little more meat on my bone. When April moved out of the orphanage, she found a lot of work in the town. She took as many jobs as she could. And at one point when she was 19, she had four jobs she was working at. Due to the amount of stress it put upon April, she was underperforming in all of her jobs. Eventually, she lost all but one, the one she still works at to this day, Benson and Benson's Bakery. Yeah, the Bensons are great. They have been so kind to me at this job. I'm very grateful to the Bensons. But what April does not know is that the Bensons have just gotten into a horrible accident involving a gas leak in their home. Neither of them made it out alive. Wait, what? Who? April has yet to find out that she has lost her job and any means of obtaining a new one, as she has been fired from all the other businesses in the town. What? How is this? Who are you? Ah, it seems you've finally noticed me. It must mean this story is coming to a close. Close? Sorry. Don't worry, April. I am the narrator. My job is to shape the way a story progresses. So what? It's your fault my life has been horrible. Well, yes, but that is the way of the story. And this one has gone on for much too long. Why do you get to decide my life? Why do I not get to narrate my story? What if I wanted to change it? April, that is very dangerous. You do not want to play with the story. Let me find out myself. I warned you. Then April began to rise again. She fought all her life and was tired of following the story. She wanted to set a new life for herself. She met the narrator on his plane of existence. And there, they stood the same height, level being to another. Fine. If this is how you plan to continue, then I will join. In the empty white plain, it was like a void. There was no up, no down, no left nor right. It always feels like you're falling, never stopping. Movement is freeing and you feel like you can fly. In the falling, the two beings get closer to each other. As they move closer, April locks eyes with the narrator and then charges in to attack him. The narrator attempts to dodge, but April follows him and hits him in the stump. The sound echoing for what felt like forever. Air, then blue, creating a gust of wind that threw the narrator into the void. Regaining himself, the narrator speeds up to the speed of sound. He circles April at such a speed that it looks like there were 10 of him flying at April. In just one millisecond, he flies at April, attacking her, and in one punch, he severely harms April, knocking her into the void. 
Fallen through the void, April's life flashed before her eyes. She remembered all of the horrible, horrible things that happened to her, and in this, she had the rage that burned like thousand suns. The rage all directed at the man who caused all of her pain, the narrator. She launched herself at the narrator. If she was going to die here, she was going to make sure she take him with her. When April launched herself, she flew within an inch of the narrator's face, but was stopped by a force of some kind. It didn't feel like a wall, but almost like her own body stopped her. She began to realize the severity of the situation she was in as she was stuck. April began pushing as hard as she could to attack the narrator. She pushed with all her might and she began to move. The force from her was so strong the air around them began to push itself away. April broke free and hit the narrator in the face, his face crunching from the attack. Instead of the narrator's head crushing into bits, he reacted quickly enough to completely dodge the attack. He launched himself back out of the way of April's destruction. <laughs> Why won't you just die? Said April as she charged at the narrator. The narrator began to charge at April with both their fists out and ready to collide with each other. April speeds up to hit the narrator with higher force. The narrator speeds up so much that the air around April slows her down, forcing her into a tumble as the narrator collides with her body, crushing her vocal cords. With all her strength, she forced out one last sentence. You... Never stopped telling the story. This was the end of April's story. It was a long journey leading to her eventual demise, and there is only one thing left to say. The end.